This is a preview of my Python backend course. If you'd be interested in this, check out the link down in the pinned comment or in the description. In the previous episode, we talked about how to set up a virtual environment, which will allow you to easily change the active packages when you're developing in Python. The question is, how do we install these same exact packages on a different machine? Say you have multiple computers, or you need to install those same packages on a deployment server, or you are working in a team environment. Well, this is all done with a requirements.txt file. It'd be nice if we could list out every dependency we have, put that in a text file, and then we could just give that text file to whoever needs it, and then go through that list and start installing every single one. Pretty similar to a package.json file if you're familiar with Node. AWS is also going to use the requirements.txt file to install all dependencies on our deployment server. So this is really important. So let's talk about how to create a requirements.txt file. So here I am in the terminal. We already created our virtual environment with Python 3-m vnv.venv. Then we activated with dot dot vnv slash bin slash activate. So that should get you to the exact same point I'm at where I already have the virtual environment activated. Now let's go ahead and install some package. We'll just say pip install Django Boto3 and requests. So we're gonna install multiple packages at once, which you can do just by separating them by spaces. There we go, we'll hit enter and give this a second to install everything. It'll also install any other dependencies that these packages need. All right, we have those installed. Now, if only there was a nice command to output all the packages we had. Oh wait, there is, we learned about it in the last video as well. Pip freeze. So this is actually the exact same thing we're going to put inside of a text file. So the easiest thing we can do is just say pip freeze and then redirect that output to requirements.txt. Now double check the spelling on that. By convention, it's going to need to be exactly this. I'm sure you could use something else, but this is probably what AWS expects and other people are going to expect as well. But now what we can do is we could say cat and then require mints.txt to see what's inside of the file. You can see it's the exact same output. Now let's say you install something else. We'll just say pip install pyjwt. It'll install that, but it does not unfortunately automatically add that to the requirements.txt file. So when we say pip freeze, we will see that installed pyjwt. But when we take a look at our text file, requirements.txt, it's not in there. So anytime you install anything, you're going to have to go through that process again of just saying pip freeze requirements.txt. Unfortunately, I'm not sure of an automated way to do this. So just make sure you go through that process. Now, if you forget to do the requirements.txt and someone grabs your project, the code may execute fine for a little while until it hits the code that needs that dependency. And then it's not going to work, it'll error out. But if say you have some project that does not have a requirements.txt file, you could simply run the application and start installing dependencies as you hit these errors. And if you go through the different options in the application, you should have a complete requirements.txt. Obviously that's not an ideal solution because you might miss something, you might make a mistake, and you'll be getting probably the latest versions of all these different dependencies when your project may have been built with something else. Ideally, you would be able to manually upgrade that instead of just grabbing the latest of everything. I'm gonna talk about a potential way of automating this process at the end of this video, but I wanna show you something else first, and that is if you have a requirements.txt file, how do you actually use it to install those dependencies? The trick here is to say pip install dash r and then the name of the file requirements.txt that should go through and say requirements already satisfied now back to that interesting challenge i mentioned oh my gosh i have way too many tabs open so how do you automatically create requirements.txt because if you clone some repo you may not already have these packages installed so one person here suggests pip rex for probably requirements and maybe there's some other solutions here. This one mentions the freeze, but again, doesn't really work if you don't wanna add all of the packages you have to a requirements.txt, or if you're in a completely fresh virtual environment. Mm, let's see, not too many other highly rated suggestions. 
I'm just going to try this out real quick. So let's go ahead and go back to our terminal. And I'm going to say code dot, which will open the current directory in Visual Studio Code. Now I'm sure many of you that is not going to work. So what you can do is do command shift P or probably control shift P on Windows and just type in code dot, which will give you the option to install code command in path. Potentially slightly different on Windows, but that's how you do it in Mac. Alternatively, just open Visual Studio Code and navigate to your project folder. And you can see we have our requirements.txt file, but I wanna go ahead and delete this. And we're gonna go ahead and create a new file. We'll just call it hello.py or something. And what we're gonna do inside of here is just do some very basic code. We'll say import requests, which is used to request things off the internet. And we're going to make a requests dot get call to Google. So we'll just say HTTPS colon slash slash google.com. Now when I run this, the output says response 200. So obviously I have requests installed globally and I'm not in an activated virtual environment. But let's just say I was for a second. Let's just say we had a fresh virtual environment. And I'll just call this .venv2, making sure to leave the three on there. So we will activate that real quick. And from here, we run the application, so we'll say python hello.py, no module named requests. So that's what's gonna happen if you don't have requests installed. So from here, let's go ahead and say pip install pip rex, like so. And I've actually, haven't had the greatest experience with this package, but I don't know of anything better. Pretty much what I'll do is say pip rex dot, which refers to the current directory, I'll hit enter. And then it says successfully saved requirements file in requirements.txt. Once that's done, it'll say that it created the requirements.txt file. Taking a peek at that, you can see it has a lot of stuff in here. So I'm not sure why it fills up with so much extra stuff. So let's just say, for example, I had a separate folder. And I'm literally just going to call it folder. And I'm going to put my hello file in that folder. And let's try this again, but from that folder, we'll delete the requirements.txt and say piprex folder, hit enter. You can see it made this and it also took much less time. And now it just has requests. So my experience with this is that it only seems to do it correctly when we're in a directory dedicated for that Python file, possibly multiple Python files, but I'm not sure if it's being in the same directory as the virtual environments, if that's throwing it off and it's actually going through those directories and trying to figure out packages that need installed. So if you're going to try this piprex package, then you'll probably want to have a directory dedicated for your Python project. So I showed you how to do that. You can copy that if you happen to need this. The alternative option, of course, is to just go through the code until you run into issues and start installing junk. So for example, we said import tacos. I do like tacos, but I'll try to keep this course pretty professional. This is just a silly example. No module named tacos. So then you can go ahead and say pip install tacos. But the problem with this is it's only going to hit those errors when that line of code is hit. So if I said something like if false, and let's say this was some condition, you know, like input We'll just create a variable x. So if x is equal to tacos, let's just run this code real quick. Python hello.py. And I still have this in that other directory, so let me go ahead and move that out. And we'll just get rid of this folder. There we go. Now let's try that again, Python hello.py. It's waiting for my input, we'll say tacos. And then we get the error, no module name tacos. So it doesn't go through all the, the actual source code looking for imports and complaining about those modules. You don't have to import all of them at the top of the file. You can import them in different blocks or in different functions and the code will work fine unless you hit that module and don't have it installed. So to show you that again, if we had a line down here, print 
no worries. And this time, let's say something else like hello. Well, it says no worries, never hitting that import. So you might not actually have all the packages and you don't realize it. Okay, so the last section of this video is probably less important than the beginning, the essential stuff with creating the requirements.txt and installing from the requirements.txt. If you made it to the end of this video, then that's just some extra info that's probably good to know. But the conclusion of this section is just try to use the requirements.txt because it makes everything easier and you don't got to deal with all these other different options. So the question is now, what's up next? Well, this is the end of our intro section, which kind of gave the foundation for getting our project prerequisites figured out. So we understand how Python works and how pip works and virtual environments and the requirements.txt. So these are all the things that a lot of people skip and they just start learning the essentials of Python code, like understanding how to write all this stuff. But in my opinion, going through that extra stuff is good for you. And now we'll be able to go into the Python code with a little bit more strength in our skills. I do still want to get this project in Git and up on GitHub, but we're not going to do that quite yet. We're going to do that not on the next video, but the video after that, because in the next video, I want to actually create our project. And then you can just go free from there, just creating all kinds of web applications. But we just need a little bit of more extra information on how to actually set up the project. Because at this point, all we have is virtual environments and a plain Python file. So we'll talk about how to install and set up Django in the next one. And then once we got that set up, we will put it all in Git and put it up on GitHub so you can get the code and download it for yourself or compare code. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the next one.